Hi everyone, it's Andrea here. Welcome to my channel. Um, following hot on the heels of October's Spookathon is November's non-fiction November. This is the second year that this has been running apparently. Obviously I wasn't on booktube the first year but I'm here now and I'm loving it. And this is run by Olive over at A Book of Olive and Nonfic Books. I will leave links to both of their channels down below. I am a big non-fiction fan and I love the idea of this. And the idea is to get you reading more non-fiction. So if you don't read any non-fiction, you can read one. If you read one, read two. If you read two, read three and so on. I usually read at least one, sometimes two a month. So they've set several challenges. You can do one challenge or you don't have to do any of them as long as you're reading non-fiction. Now, the four challenges, and it doesn't matter what order they're in, are, and I'm actually under the order, I've got my books, important, controversial, fascinating, and new. And you could take that however you want to. So it can be whatever you think is important, whatever you think is controversial, and so on. So for me, for my important book, and it's a reread, it's the only reread on my list, and that is uh, Roses from the Earth, the biography of Anne Frank by Caroline Lee. I haven't read this for a long time. I mean, I, I assume you've all read The Diary of Anne Frank. If not, what's wrong with you? You should do. Um, and so it's just a biography, and it just says, this book will be an enrichment to all those interested in Anne Frank her short life, her family and the circumstances that led to her terrible destiny. But more so this is a book must for those with only a vague idea about the Holocaust and especially for those who still believe that it never happened. And I do think that is very important. We must remember what happened in World War II and this is why I class this book as important. This was a real person. She lived. She had happy times. She had sad times. She enjoyed things that we all enjoy and take for granted like going to the cinema and magazines and she never got to live to see the wonders um, that the, the rest of the 20th century brought after the war ended because she sadly died um, in the concentration camp and I think it's important because you know the saying those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it and we must never ever repeat what happened in World War II. So, this is the only reread. I'm really looking forward to reading this again. Uh, I know it makes me cry every time, along with the diaries, which I do have as well. So that's my first book. So for my controversial um, <clears throat> pick, it's controversial in the sense that it's controversial to a small group of people. It's not a big controversial thing, but the book I'm gonna read is Tony Williams with Humphrey Price's Uncle Jack, which is a book on Jack the Ripper. This is one of the ones where they claim, my uncle was Jack the Ripper, Uncle Jack. Um, it's controversial in Ripper circles and Ripperology circles because there are so many books that say I know who the Ripper was and then they don't provide any evidence. I haven't read this one. This is one I picked up in Hale Why. Claims the solution at last to the famous crime story of all, which it's not because there are still various things going on. Um, this person identified in the book of the killer of five women in London's East End in 1888 has never before been named a suspect in more than a hundred years of intense speculation. An eminent man in his field, naming him will cause huge shockwaves in the places where he is still venerated. One of the authors is a direct descendant of the killer. He did not set out to find Jack the Ripper, but the evidence discovered while researching his illustrious ancestor is incontrovertible. So I'm at the moment on a big reading Jack the Ripper binge. I've got about four or five more books to read that I've purchased. I do collect them. I do have quite a collection up here somewhere over here, just out shot. <clears throat> so I want to get that one. And it's not an overly big book as well because uh, the next two books are quite big. They get bigger. Well, actually it was, it was bigger, small, and the next one's bigger again. So amazingly, the next book, which for me is Fascination, is something I've been fascinated with for years. And it, it's turned out that myself and Olive from a book Olive are reading the same book for fascination, and that is The Keys of Egypt by Leslie and Roy Adkins. Um, been interested in Egyptology for a very long time, have a lot of books on the subjects, DVDs and um, documentaries. Uh, basically, this is the road, to, the race to re read the hieroglyphs. Um, so it's about uh, uh, Jean-Francois Champollion, um, who was the man who completely deciphered the um, hieroglyphics and of course there was a, 
an English physician named Thomas Young who was also trying to solve the things and between them they did manage to to do it with Champoli and just uh, making the biggest discoveries it's going to be absolutely fascinating I haven't seen the Rosetta Stone in person as well I love the Rosetta Stone I love the British Museum's Egyptian collection it's one of my favorite places to go when I'm in London I'm not gonna lie I'm really looking forward to getting into this book and for new <clears throat> I have a huge tome of a book it's a big beast of a book it's a bit of a brick coming in about 700 odd pages I'm not actually sure how many pages it is including the notes and the index it's 745 pages I'm sure Olive would appreciate this because I've never read anything about Russian history but this book is the Romanovs 1613 to 1918 by Simon Sibag Montefiore, eh? Montefiore or Montefiore? I'm not sure. I probably butchered that name. So this tells the story of the Romanov family from 1613 until the end in 1918. And as you can see, it is a massive book. Now I have read in the reviews that there are a few mistakes in this book, so I'm going to read it with a bit of an open mind. It's got the family tree. Uh, photographs and, and, and illustrations of, of paintings and of course there are photographs as well um, all the way through it I'm really looking forward to getting to this one this one is a big chunk of the book I do not expect to read much more in November other than those four because this one is absolutely massive I've got to be honest I saw this not long after it first came out it came out in April this year so it's not only is it new to me it's actually a new book and I saw it in Waterstones and I've been eyeing it up ever since. And I thought, non-fiction November, perfect time to crack on and read it. So I picked it up on Sunday from Waterstones. Because I'm glad they're open until four o'clock. So I snuck off down there before rehearsal. So that's it. So those are my non-fiction November TBRs. If I can read anything else as well as the big beast, obviously that will be in my normal wrap-ups. But yeah. So those are my four books for non-fiction November. Are you taking part? If so, what are you going to read? Uh, let me know in the comments below because I'm always interested in reading more non-fiction. I, I am, as you can tell, a bit of a history buff because all these are history related. Romanoffs, Keys of Egypt, Jack Ripper and Anne Frank. I haven't got much of a chain difference than those though. So let me know what you're reading because I, I would love to, to know more good non-fiction to read, especially if it's historical. Um, Yes, I will be back very soon with some other videos, but for now, that's all from me. So if you've liked this video, obviously give me a thumbs up, share, comment if you've read any of these books or if you intend to join in with Nonfiction November, and of course subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and I will see you very, very soon if I've not been crushed by the books. Bye!